this is my class and that's me i was inspired to make my capstone project about some people that matter to me the most dancers the pandemic caused a ton of change for the dance community we went from seeing each other all the time to feeling like strangers and struggling with communication and confidence all of this led to creating my capstone identify statement Dancers need ways to stay active and keep a positive mindset during times when they don't have access to in-person classes because I think many dancers struggled and felt alone while trying to stay in shape during the pandemic before in-person classes returned. This problem is important to me because my friends and I really struggled with dance throughout the pandemic. We had to dance at home and deal with restrictions constantly changing. I ended up learning that pretty much every dancer I talked to struggled with similar things that I also struggled with. There was a huge lack of communication between dancers, which resulted in a lack of support. Um, this ended in a lot of dancers having lower confidence levels than they did before the pandemic. While researching my project, I had to use a lot of soft skills like critical thinking and creativity to draw people in. To further my understanding of what dancers were dealing with during the pandemic, I investigated them through interviews. Here are a few of the questions that I asked. How did dancing by yourself make you feel? How did you feel coming back and taking in-person classes again? How often did you talk t to your friends from dance while social distancing? Did you feel supported when you came back to the studio? And where was your overall confidence level at while dancing in a studio again? Public speaking, confidence, and knowing how to use my resources were important soft skills that helped me reach out to people for interviews. Leadership skills were also very important during this step to make sure everyone I interviewed had a clear understanding of what I needed, what I was going to do, and how I was going to do it. These questions from my interviews helped me create some maps to visualize my problem and its root causes. So what you're seeing right now is my ecosystem map. Here I am connecting dancers and things that have really impacted them or helped them throughout the pandemic. The two main issues we have are COVID and dancers because they are directly impacting each other. Um, yeah, that's the whole map. And it continues to look at resources and things that have helped dancers and could possibly create a solution. Now what we're seeing is my empathy map for dancers at home. Here I had to write down things that dancers were thinking and feeling, seeing, saying, doing, and hearing all while they were dancing at home. This is another empathy map, but this time it is for dancers when they are in the studios. So I had to write down the same things, basically um, what they were thinking and feeling, what they were seeing, what they said and did, and what they were hearing. One of the biggest differences between the dancers in the studio and dancers at home that I found while making these empathy maps were their confident levels, how they felt, they seemed a lot happier in the studio, and how much effort they give, and yeah. So this is my root cause analysis. Here I am connecting some of the biggest problems that dancers were having and what made them have those problems or what caused those feelings and figuring out how they all work together. After interviewing and creating maps, I changed my identify statement to my interpret statement. Dancers need ways to stay active and keep a positive mindset during times when they don't have access to in-person classes because I learned that many dancers felt alone and unmotivated during the pandemic before in-person classes returned. When creating this statement, I had to use soft skills like having empathy, being able to seek help, and using problem-solving skills. This was pretty easy for me to do because the dancers I interviewed all had very similar experiences. I also ended up creating three design principles. These were social, easy to use, motivating. These design principles helped me come up with ideas for a final product. Here's my two by two with a couple different ideas that I had for solutions. The side with the orange box were things that were the best and the side that isn't the orange box is things that could have worked for my project but weren't exactly what I was looking for. Flexibility and creativity really helped me in the ideate step when I had to think of different ideas for my solution. 
I decided to go with a mix between an app where dancers can share videos, take class, and communicate. I had to figure out how I wanted the app to be laid out and what I wanted it to look like. I decided to call the app Dancers at Home. Here is a clip of that prototype. Ooh, let me check out Dancers at Home. Ooh, at Dancer01. Let me look at the rest of my notifications. Oh my God, at Dance Studio shared my post? Ooh. Let me update my profile. Dance is Life 22. Oh my gosh, that is me. Look at my leap. Ooh, straight legs. About time to check my DMs. Wow, I am popular. Let's look at Dancer 33. Mm, I don't know if I'm gonna respond. Let me check out my explore. OMG, Yumiko has new leotards? <gasps> Ooh. I'm gonna, I'm gonna make a post and tag them. Mm, which one do I post? My arabesque looks so good in that one. But look at that turn, that's the one. And I'm posting. This is my focus group. I dance with all of these girls. It's Jessica, Noria, Molly, and Olivia. These girls helped me by giving me feedback on my prototypes so that the final solution could be the best it possibly could. Based on the feedback from my focus group, I decided to add or emphasize more ways to communicate, advertising, making sure it's just dancers, personalizing your experience, and audition information. I ended up making a second low-tech prototype on paper before creating a proof of concept in a Google Slides. Here are these changes in my proof of concept. Here's the home page. Um, from here, you can go to any of these down here and those, and we're going to go to settings. Um, you can pick your user type and your interests. This is, I'm a student, and these are all my interests. And then there's also the privacy settings. Now we're going to go to notifications, and here you can see that these people liked your post and the people shared your post. And now to the profile, and here's your profile and your username, and whatever else you want to write and anything you want to post. And now to messages, here's all your messages from everyone in the app that you can communicate with, which is one of the main purposes. And we're going to look at what one of those could look like right now, and here's what it looks like. You can type a message here, hit send, and talk to someone. Now to the explore, um, you can get ads and other see other posts that you want to see, and then we're gonna go to the auditions. And here people can post about their auditions and their cast list and any kind of information like that. And then there's also a live tab, and people can go live and do whatever they want. Um, and we're gonna join one as an example. So here's an example of what one would look like and you can have a chat and type stuff and send it. And now to the post. So you can post your pictures, you just pick one. We're gonna pick this one. And then it's gonna look like that. You can type a caption and hit post and yeah. After making this second prototype, I was able to create my final product. Here's a clip of that. Okay, so starting with accessing the app, you can open this link and it goes to the login screen. You can type your email in or log in with Google. So what it's gonna do after you type your email in is a pin is going to get sent to your email and you'll get a notification like that. And you can go ahead and type it in and hit sign in. So when you sign in, it directly brings you to the home page. There's a bunch of pictures and it kind of looks like how it did in the proof of concept in the low-tech prototypes. And there's also a search option so you can search keywords and go ahead and scroll and it'll pop up. And as you can see, it's just one post right there. Here's the settings with all of these options. Then the notifications pretty much looks the same as it did before. 
And you can see liked your post, shared your post, all of that. And here's, here's the explore with again, similar posts, but I put the words over them this time. And this is something that I thought was really cool, the auditions. So I figured out that you could put a link in here and it takes you to a form, which I'll show you in a second. So I tapped on that first one. There's this example sign up form that you can open and it takes your email and stuff like that. And yeah, you can just exit out of that and go to the next page, which is the live. And I also figured out you can add Instagram live links to this. So you could just click on that and hit a link when it's actually there, which is not right now, but that's okay. <laughs> and yeah, then that's your profile. And there's a chat option. You hit that little plus button and it asks for your name. My name is Maggie, so I put Maggie. And then you can type whatever you want and hit send. And there you go, and that's the whole prototype. While implementing my final product, I had to use soft skills like critical thinking and organization. These were important when figuring out how I wanted my app to look. I also had to use some hard skills, including using technology and visual design to help myself use my computer to make the app, make it look nice, publish the app, and add it to my home screen.